Hello everybody, Cody McIntyre here from Boss Poses 3D and today I'm going to be showing you how to get After Effects cameras into Blender very easily without the bullshit, okay? So, without further ado, let's get started here. So the first thing you want to do is record a 1920 by 1080 video on your phone and import that into After Effects. And if you notice that yours should look exactly like mine, and at the sign, you'll have an effects tab, okay? Next thing you're gonna do is type track, and we're gonna be getting the 3D camera tracker you see right here, and we're gonna drop that right on our video, and we're gonna let this analyze process finish, and until then, I'm just gonna pause the video and get right back to you as soon as it hits the camera salt, and I'm gonna show you how to get all the cameras into Blender. So there's gonna be a plugin you're gonna need to download that I'll uh, link into the description. It's AE2 Blend. Uh, the 1.2.8 uh, version does work on Blender, 3.5 so that's what I'll be doing today's video on so again I just got the recording of my uh, living room door here and I'm just gonna be tracking a cube right there so we're just gonna wait for the analyze to be finished it's about 50% now so I'll be right back all right I'm back we are about on uh, 99% so that was pretty pretty quick so it all depends on the resolution of your video so it doesn't have to be 1920 but it is definitely recommended Okay, so now that uh, our solve is complete and there has been no errors, you'll notice that we have these targets we can place around. So this is what we're going to be using to get the origin of our scene. And that's pretty much uh, the most of what we need to be doing the animation from Blender, right? Okay, so the next thing I'm actually going to do is uh, try to find a good point. And you can scroll further into the timeline to get a better uh, track point. The flattest is the best. But um, one thing to keynote here is to try to avoid the exposure. I used a, a special app on my phone if you notice that the exposure increases. But that shouldn't affect our track by any means. But um, So anyway, I'm going to find a cool little track right here. So all I'm going to do is press the uh, left mouse button right there. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit set ground plane and origin. And on those exact same points, I'm going to right click and hit create solid and camera. Okay. So now that when we scroll back through the timeline, you'll notice that we have a tracked plane right there. And that's what we're going to be using to get on over into Blender. So let's go and open up Blender and we will start from there. Okay, now that I got the Blender open here, you'll notice after you install the A2 Blend plugin in your object mode, you'll see this panel at the side. We're going to be focusing on the camera in the plane button, okay? So now that we have uh, Blender open, we're going to jump back over into After Effects. We're going to be grabbing some data now. So we're going to go down in here into our little panel at the side. I'm just going to make sure nothing else is selected. I'm going to bring down the transform or you can press U on it to show everything with a keyframe. We're just going to hold shift after we press position and orientation to select both. Control C. Okay. And that pretty much does it for our camera. So now all we're going to have to do is jump back over into Blender. And now I can click down here into this little corner where it says create camera. And that's going to add all of our keyframes right into here. And if I go into my camera mode, you'll notice that we have a camera. So that just means that we got our After Effects camera into Blender. There is a couple more steps we're going to do, but just to focus on the camera first, the next thing you're going to want to do is go back over into After Effects and you won't be able to see the panel for some reason on OBS, but you want to double click on your camera tracker and you'll see a picture of a camera on a little window that pops up and you actually want, oops, I actually changed the focal length on my camera. You want to select the focal length and you want to copy the number that you see in there. And then what you want to do is come back over into Blender. You want to come up into the top where it says character or camera transform and then just open that and select the camera that we can get into this camera panel down here in our properties and we want to paste that value into our focal length and you'll notice that the uh, scene changes a little bit and that's perfectly fine so the next thing we're actually going to do is get our track point in here so we're going to pretty much do the same thing we're going to go back over into after effects right here and we're going to come down into our track solid and we're going to go to transform and again i always just click on uh, something random that way i don't have something else selected i've had that problem before so we're going to do the first four uh anchor point all the way down to uh, orientation so if i uh, hold shift and then click there and then click there it selects them all and we're going to right our shift control and then we're going to bring those into blender as well so we're going to go back into Blender and we're going to click create plane. And if you notice that created a plane exactly where it is on our footage. And if I scrub back through, 
you'll notice that that plane is tracked. So I'm going to come back into down to zero. And the next thing we're actually going to do is get our video in. So again, I'm going to click onto the camera. You can click this button right here, but we're going to come on down back into where we did the focal length. We're going to click uh, check background images, add image, change this to movie clip, open, and then we're going to find our footage that we were using to track that video. So as you see that it's pink right here, don't fret because that just means you're not on the first keyframe, right? So that's all you have to do right there. And if I go down to my opacity and I increase this, you can increase the visibility. But if you notice that I do have a plane tracked into my scene now, so we got anything we wanted to do right there. So right now we can start to have a little bit of fun. So the first thing I always do is go into add mesh and I'm going to add a cube into here. And now when I blow up this cube, and then I move this and I bring this up a little bit. We will be using this plane as a shadow catcher, but I may save that uh, tutorial for a, another video because you can do quite a few things with the shadow catchers. But for now, I'm just going to leave that on right there. And I'm going to show you that any size can go. So as you see, perfectly tracks. Awesome. So that's good. Next thing we can actually do is come over into this nice little plugin I have right here called Blender Kit. It has materials and everything you can use. So I'm going to go into my materials and you'll have this list up here that shows you a bunch of cool stuff. So I'm just going to add a wood onto my cube. It should take a minute to pop up. And if you see, I do have a wooden cube right now and that looks pretty damn good. So even if I wanted to, I could actually go into this plane. So if you wanted to actually start adding that as to catch the shadows of your scene, so I'll just show you up into the compositing part. So all you would have to do is come up into um, your little camera right here where it says uh, render settings, come down into film, and then you wanna make sure this is set to transparent, okay? So the next thing you wanna do next is come down into your uh, view layer properties. You wanna come all the way down and you wanna click shadow catcher, okay? And then the next thing you want to do is make sure you have your plane selected. Click this orange box in properties, come down to visibility, and then you want to click shadow catcher. That took me forever to figure out in Blender 3.5 because it was a little bit different in uh, 2.8. But now when I come into my full render mode, that should be transparent. And if you notice that we do have a shadow from our cube, right? We just don't have any lights involved into the scene. So if I wanted to add a light, I could, I could just add a sun or an HDRI. And if you notice that we have a cube on our floor and that looks pretty cool, you know what I mean? So if I really wanted to start getting crazy, I could even animate it. So with that selected, click this little bubble here in your timeline and say, if I wanted to start it really small, make it like pulse, we could come up into like frame 10, make it really big and then kind of like beat like a heart. So we'll just kind of skip a few frames. Like that. And then we'll come up in 30. And then we can actually start to act, we add kind of like a rotation to it. So we can maybe spin it around like that. So as you see, we got like an animated cube in our scene and she spins all nice and whatever we need to do. We'll even Get that going a little bit slower like that. And it kind of looks like it's slowing down its spin. Like that. Right? And so now we have an uh, animated uh, scene, right? Now all we would have to do is go into compositing and render this out, which is pretty easy. And as you see, that took almost no time to start animating in our scene in real life, right? So. I hope you all enjoyed that video today. If you did like today's video, please do like and subscribe. We got plenty of stuff on Facebook and YouTube, plenty of tutorials coming, and we'll be doing the compositing in the next video. So thank you all. Have a good day.